Hi, welcome to North Carolina State University's Conservatory. My name is Megan and I'm here with my friend. He is a PhD student here at NCSU and he's going to be sharing some exciting news that's coming. Hey there, Brandon Huber. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about Lupin, which is getting ready to bloom, uh, probably middle of next week. So Lupin is was named in 2016. Um, during its first bloom, and it bloomed in, in the September of 2016 at the age of 13 years old. Now we're at 16 years old, and it's ready to bloom again. Typically, corpse flowers can rebloom once they're mature every three to five years, but it takes up to 13 years or so just to bloom for the first time. Part of this is because the tuber, the corm that is underground here, think of like a potato, a storage unit, where this corm needs to be quite sizable to flower. And for us, that first corm in 2016 was 50 pounds. Uh, this time, we're now at 120 pounds. The tuber weighs uh, uh, 12, two feet across. So a massive corm that takes up most of this container and is a foot and a half deep um, of the tuber itself. So, um, so Amorphophallus fall in, Amorphophallus titanum is the world's largest inflorescence. Um, it's a member of the aroid family. So when we think of aroids, they're classified by the spadex and the spathe. Now this spathe has not yet unraveled, but will next week, probably in the middle of the week. But if we think of aroids, we, there's a lot of our common house plants which are also aroids, such as the peace lily. And you can see a similar structure here, where we have the, the spadex and the spathe here, which is the hood of the flower. Um, you have this and you know monsteros, anthuriums, and um, alocasias are all in the aroid family. This whole bed is actually aroids. Um, interesting thing about a morphallus is they tip, the titanum will flower, either it'll send a flower or it'll have a leaf. So the leaf is this giant compound leaf structure. This whole structure is one leaf. So this lupin, for example, this is a quite mature plant but has not flowered yet so the plant actually has to get even bigger than this um, with this compound leaf that emerges from the corm the it'll grow it'll retain this leaf structure for up to two years where it's photosynthetically active in building the corm up um, when it's mature it will flower but they don't flower and have leaves at the same time so when you look when you see a more false titanium it's either in leaf and it's typically in leaf because the flower is quite rare or it's dormant and then or it's in flower. Um, titanum start very small as a plant. They start as, you know, here's a young titanum that's about a year old and uh, this one will take another probably seven to ten years before it even flowers. Uh, Amorphous is a very, a very diverse genus uh, with many different species from around the world. So uh, many amorphophallus are smaller. There's small ones from flowers that are only an inch, all the way up to your titanium, which has a flower, which range from four to even nine foot in some cases. All right, Brandon, we have a couple questions. The uh, sure. first one is, how much does the size of the bloom on a singular corpse flower vary with each bloom? Right, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, the titanium flower could range anywhere from four to nine feet. And uh, we typically see with the morphophallus, it's pretty interesting because the flower within this, on the same bulb, the flower could vary, um, you know, from year, from years to years, you know. So the, for conjac is, conjac is very, uh, is a, another species of morphophallus, conjac does this where flowers range from, you know, two foot all the way to five, six foot. Um, so they're very variable. Unlike a typical flowering plant where the flower is the same every time, morphophallus are very different in their flowers vary quite drastically. But I would say that, you know, selection from selection, different plants, different bulbs of the same species are more different than maybe the, the bulb itself. Because lupin here, the flower is following a very similar growth track that it did in 2016. And it's gonna flower about the same size as it did back in 2016, even though the bulb is more than double what it was last time. Okay, we have another question. How long does the bloom last? Right, so 
typically they bloom two to three days. So this, this flower development period takes about two months, I would say, from the point where the little bud starts to form on the corm all the way up to this flower. Um, and it grows very rapidly in the final month. So, um, and all this just for a two to three day full bloom period, they release a horrible odor, hence their name, the corpse flower. And they have this like rotting flesh smell, like roadkill. Um, to draw in pollinators, carry-on beetles, and they also release heat to help draw in those pollinators, known as thermogenesis. So, uh, very fascinating uh, strategy for pollination. And also, titanums are not self-pollinating, so they require pollen from another nearby flower, which seems to be quite a rare occurrence to have two of these flowering in nature together. Who all can come see the corpse flower? So. It, the, we're completely going to be open to the public for um, visiting Lupin uh, during the flower again, probably around August 1st. So if you want to get up here and check it, uh, probably from August 1st to the 3rd, I, I'd say would be the peak time to see this. We're going to send out a uh, form that will allow people to sign up just to reserve a spot because we're, we have to... Uh, we're, we have a limited amount of people that can be allowed by fire code in this greenhouse. Uh, so we want to ensure that everyone can get in and see it that wants to see it. So be sure to be on the lookout for that soon. That's great. One last question, Brandon. What is uh, the corpse flower's conservation status? Right, so in the wild, this is uh, native to uh, Sumatra uh, and it is listed as endangered. Um, I do see people post photos of them in bloom in the wild, but they are endangered and they're uh, but I, I believe there's a, there's a wide range of, of, uh, plant, of total number of these plants out in the wild that they're maybe not su uh, sh sure about. But it is listed as endangered, um, but, a lot, but there's a number of people growing these inside conservatories. Great, Brandon. Thank you so much for your time. And we look forward to seeing and smelling Lupin. Thank you.